In this video, I'm going to talk about color space in InDesign. So as I've talked about in the other videos, RGB should be used if you're doing things like ebooks or uh, anything that's only going to be seen on a screen. CMYK is the default for InDesign because it's technically a print layout program, although it's much more powerful than that, even though some of the other features are a little bit underserved or uh, in some cases underdeveloped at this point. So I'm going to use these two things that I made uh, for a concert. I've got a poster that was printed and this file here is uh, the way that I laid out a Facebook cover image. So the Facebook cover image I knew was only going to be online and if you look at the rulers you can see that this is indeed not an 850 inch document but 850 pixels. So I set this up um, using a, a mobile option and then went in and put the pixel dimensions myself based on a template that I found. The poster I just used a default print layout um, which was uh, just letter size CMYK. So if I open my swatches palette I can see that all my swatches at a glance are CMYK. And this little four color thing tells me that. So these are all print colors. This is the default that you're used to looking to at in InDesign. In the cover photo file, you notice that all my default swatches are called RGB and then the color name. And they have three stripes, the RGB stripes. So below that, I have some CMYK swatches, which come from the art, artwork that I copied over. So if I highlight this word, you can see it's in a CMYK swatch. So InDesign is all right at kind of forcing the colors over. So when I save this out as a JPEG, it's, it's going to be pretty true to the colors, even though some of these are CMYK. If this is going to go in a, a place that is a bit more complicated, perhaps some ebook situations, you want to make sure that you actually have all RGB colors. So the way to do that is to edit the swatch. So you can uh, double click on a swatch or you can right click. Um, so one, one thing you might want to do is make a duplicate. So you could have RGB duplicates to make sure you've got them right and you can delete all the CMYK ones. I've seen people work like that. Um, I don't necessarily think it's the best way to work. You can go to swatch options or if you double click to edit. You can just change the color type, sorry, the color mode, <laughs> ahead of myself, to RGB. So if you have any colors that say spot, that's specifically for printing. And those should probably go to process as well. Although usually once you put them to RGB, uh, they won't be spot colors anymore for the most part. So I'm going to go through all of my CMYK swatches and change them to RGB and you can see the little icon at the side changes. So this looks like a, a lot of swatches compared to the artwork I have and you can see a little bit of color shift there on that one. So one thing you can do first is in the side menu you can say select all unused and it's going to select all these swatches that I'm not using. So it only takes one of the CMYK ones away but I'm just going to delete them so that my list is shorter. So I would go through here and make sure that my swatches were correct. And if I saw a color shift I didn't like, this would be the time to change it. This is the last one. Okay. So 
So I saw a color shift on this that I really wasn't a fan of. So I'm going to go back and edit that. So I had a tint on that. So I'm going to undo and see, okay, it was a 60% tint. So instead of double clicking on it, I'm going into the swatch options through uh, right click or control click. So that way it doesn't apply the color when I double click. So once I have the, um, this option, this window up, I'm going to make sure that my preview box is checked. I'm going to put some adjustments on here. Bring back some of that orangey feel. Okay. So just like Photoshop and Illustrator, a lot of this is a technical process. Uh, but you want to make sure that you have the right type of document and make sure that your swatches are truly lining up if it's a, a situation where you're not just going to export a JPEG. So this is key for ebooks. So some devices might have a really hard time translating those CMYK colors. And because InDesign is a layout tool, um, it is kind of hit and miss as far as converting colors because it's not meant to do that. InDesign's a layout program. It's not meant to edit your graphics. So you're going to get the best results by knowing what you're putting in and making sure that what you put in is the right color space for where it's going to end up. If I go to the new document window, I can see I've got this box here that says intent print. So this is what I've been talking about the whole time. So if I know this is going to be printed, and this is the default that we usually use, it's going to bring you up a document that's in CMYK, uh, because in design is smart enough to know that print documents should be in CMYK. If I make a web or mobile document, it's going to be in CM, or sorry, it's going to be in RGB. So the only real difference between the two if I go back and forth, is you can see that the page size presets, um, that menu is populated by different things. <clears throat> so on the mobile setting, I get some device presets. And in the web menu, it's somewhat common screen sizes. So that's the only real difference between the two. But when I make a new web document, I'll have my basic RGB swatches. And when I make a new print document, I'll have the basic CMYK swatches. So that's the difference from a uh, new document standpoint and making sure that you've got the right type of file and the right type of swatches in your document. Now, if you've already got a file going and you go to File, document setup. So again, this is my RGB document that's going to be a Facebook cover photo. You see that you can change the intent right here. So you could then change it to print. And it's also unfortunately going to change the size. So I could go back and change that um, into my pixel dimensions. I'm just going to skip it for now for the sake of time. And you'll notice that it forces all of the swatches over. So I'm going to undo on that. And I'm going to hit undo a few times until I have some CMYK swatches. So this is before I finish doing my swatch editing. And if I went to File, Document Setup, you notice that this is already in mobile. So if I went to web, oops, I think I've got the right size here. You notice that that didn't force the swatches over because I've already had this document going and I chose that mobile setting when I created the document. So it can do a little bit of forcing, but you definitely want to make sure you go back and edit 
and best practice is to make sure that you start with the right type of file. If you're going from print to screen version, or the other way, like I started with the poster, and I took elements of this CMYK document, pasted them in the RGB document to make a, um, a web version of this file, I do need to go through and edit those swatches to make sure I'm getting the right color when it exports. So even if you're just saving this out as a JPEG, you want to make sure that before you save it out, you have the best idea of what it's actually going to look like. And the best way to do that is to convert those swatches so that you know what you're actually going to see. So that's your summary of color spaces in InDesign.